Uh oh. Here comes trouble. Straight from Twin Town Sports Central. I'm highly motivated. I'm a highly motivated young professional. What's up, everybody? Eric Grover here. Wobbin Daily News, and you got the broadcast. Yeah. It's that, uh, bad time of the year where it's, uh, the doldrums in between high school sports season. So we don't have much, uh, locally to talk about. Um, just want to jump right into talk with Blandon and Miles. Uh, let, let's talk some uh, some Peyton Manning and some NCAA tournament. Oh yeah! <laughs> Moving right along to the broadcast. It's about that time for some Miles Trump and Landon Cup Cup, gentlemen. This is more of a reserved beat. For a, for a reserved kind of growth cast, it's the... It's a relaxing afternoon. Yeah. You know, normally we uh, record at night, and it's the middle of the day, and we all got things to do after this. Do you th- hey, Grover's mad. awake, so we're doing the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, do you think that that's going to, you know, kind of bring down the mood of this growth cast? I don't think it will. I think we can uh, keep the energy level high. Well, that's good to hear. Yeah, let me try the introduction once. Okay. Moving right along. There it is. <laughs> that's good. Okay, that, we'll get right into it. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah, yeah. You guys need to start doing these intros because it's kind of weird that I do them myself. Actually, you know, like it is the girls' cast. Well, it is my. It, yeah, that's right. But you know, it's not your name. I, I need like a Rod Roddy. You know how Bob Barker. Bob Barker doesn't introduce himself. That's true. Rod Roddy introduces <laughs> Bob Barker. Anyway, yeah, guys, lots of stuff going on this week. How's your brackets? The brackets all right. You know, obviously, some people got hurt by the uh, number twos losing out there early. But yeah, but that was I, my my bracket got totally destroyed. I had Duke in the in the championship game, but so worth it, right? Just uh, how exciting was that? Yeah, for sure worth it. I had. Misery in the championship game, and all I could do was laugh after that. <laughs> they lost that game. They played so terribly. They missed so many three pointers, and that's how Duke lost too. Yeah. Duke was like six of twenty-five from three, or something like that. I mean, that's that's not going to work. The entire time, Misery was just kind of like, oh, we'll just win this eventually. And they just never did. Yeah. When they, they needed a big bucket, they never got it. They ran out of time. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely uh, should have been playing harder from. The opening tip off. Yeah. Weren't you surprised though that at least one of those two 15 seeds didn't win the, their second game and get to the Sweet 16? Right. Uh, La, La High, Lehigh. 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 Lehigh was close. Yeah. I know. We had talked about this that Norfolk State was going to lose because they just played amazing against Missouri. Yeah. They hit. They talked about how Norfolk State it was so bad. Shot like 30 percent from three all year, and they hit like a million threes against Missouri. Yeah. And so I just assumed they were going to lose the next game. Yeah. But I thought Lee was going to win. And they almost did. I, yeah, I thought that they had it. They were up like 15, 17 in the first half. Right. Yeah, they were up and definitely up in the first half. And then Xavier the stormed back. Yeah. Can you believe that, what is it, the state of Ohio is undefeated? Yeah. 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 Four teams you know. in the Sweet 16. Yeah, well, let's talk about the teams that are left. That's all you get, 15 seeds. You're done. <laughs> Uh, you guys, well, all three of us still have our uh, pick to win left in the tournament. Are you uh, still feeling good about your pick, or I, you're the one that's I'm in the trouble. biggest trouble? Yeah. yeah. Miles had North Carolina, and after Marshall just had two amazing games, probably his best games of the year. Yeah. Now he's done. Yeah, it's. I don't, I don't think they can win the championship without him. They don't have a like solidified backup point guard even. So And they were weak at the guard spot to begin with, and yeah. that's something we talked about last week. So I don't know. I mean he's he's definitely their point guard general floor leader. I just don't see it happening without him. Yeah. Well, maybe just, he can maybe he can play through it. But maybe. It's not hard looking, to break through a, a broken wrist. Yeah. That's it's not, not looking too great. Yeah. 
You, on the other hand, Kentucky. Kentucky's looking pretty good. Yeah, well, Kentucky was the <laughs> obvious pick. And I think I read something like 85, 90% of brackets on ESPN or something have Kentucky winning it all. Yeah, it's looking pretty smart. <laughs> How, I mean, uh, well, we were talking the other day that Kentucky probably has three or four guys that will go as lottery picks next year if they all go out. So. And that's what you need. I mean, that's what you need in the tournament is star power. Yeah. So if I, somebody gets like they don't have to depend on one person. If someone gets shut down or has a bad game, they got backups and backups for those guys. Well, they are playing Indiana next, and Indiana famously beat Kentucky early in the year. Gave them was it was that their only loss? Yeah. In the regular season? Yeah. That was the only team that they lost to in the regular season. Here we go again. Yeah, but Indiana's also famously overrated, so... Well, I agree with that completely. Yeah, that rematch. Kentucky and Indiana. Yeah, and Tom Crean is not a winner. <laughs> so... <laughs> How do you really feel about Tom Crean? Oh, man, I could go on and on about that guy. <laughs> I, I wrote a humor column for the, uh, the school newspaper back in Marquette, and most of it was just making fun of Tom Crean after he left, just because I... Oh. That's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> well, let's look at some of the other teams. Who are uh, some of your dark horses to get to the Final Four here? I like the way Cincinnati's playing. Mm-hmm. Can they beat Ohio State? I don't know. Maybe. Mm-hmm. They shoot threes. And if you're shooting threes, well, you can beat just about anyone. And they have big guys as well. They do they have some size and size. Some yeah. interior defense. So I think they have the, they have the, the roster to do it, but... Ohio State to Ohio State, too. Yeah, yeah. Who do you like? It'll be interesting if NC State can give Kansas a good run. It's possible that NC now, State is a team that, get by North Carolina. Yeah. They that'll probably, be a big game. They North probably North shouldn't have even been an 11 seed. Yeah. They were way better than that. Yeah. yeah. They were probably, what, were they like the fourth or fifth best team in the ACC or something? Well, I, I guess it, I don't know, it kind of depends on, like, where you rank, like, a Florida State. Yeah, well, I think Florida State is still good. They're they're still my pick to win their bracket and get to the Final Four. Florida State's out. Yeah. Oh, are they? They got yeah. beat by Cincinnati. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, that's me. You know, I things are shaping up for Marquette. Thank they, you. They are. They are. I was about to say them as my dark horse, but now I you really guys <laughs> had the misfortune of having to watch that game with me against Murray State the other day. We did indeed. And. Uh, it's a fun game to watch. It was watch. exciting. Because both teams were going fast. They were just running. They get a rebound. They just sprint to the under, other end of the floor. I'd like to take a minute and talk about Jay Crowder. <laughs> because I really think that he's emerging as a, as, as a true star and arguably one of the best players of the, uh, of the tournament. He's put up monster double-doubles in both games. And aside from Draymond Green, I was looking at some advanced statistics. Aside from Draymond Green, Draymond Green is number one. And Jay Crowder is number two in player efficiency in the tournament. Of course, that's because Draymond Green had a triple double against the 16th seed, which doesn't count. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I how, how do you? What do you think about the Marquette Florida matchup? And what do you think about Michigan State? Well, I think they should beat Florida no problem. I think it'll be a bigger problem against Michigan State because. They actually have the talent to match up against Marquette. Florida's got those really good guards, though. Yeah. They got three of them. They do. Yeah. They got Boynton. Um, they have a freshman. I'm blanking out his name. Yeah. He's a good guard. And uh, the little point guard. Yeah, the little guy. Yep. Yeah. Is it Knight? I, no. No. Oh, what's his name? But anyways, they, they have a few good guards, and they shoot the three, too. Mm-hmm. A lot. Mm-hmm. Are you guys sticking with your picks for... Uh, it, right now, if you had to pick a team, would you go with uh, you go with Kentucky, Landon? Oh yeah, I'll stick with mine. Yeah, regardless of. I took Kansas before, and uh, and and they barely squeaked out against Purdue. Probably should have lost, but didn't. But I I like where Kansas is at right now. I still think that they have what it takes to get it done. Um, I, I think this Purdue game is going to motivate them, and they're going to come out and stomp. Uh, I don't even know who they're playing next. Ohio? Who? Who are they playing next? Ohio, maybe? Uh, they play NC State. Oh, they're playing NC State? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I... I, 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 I would pick Kansas. Yeah, you definitely got to favor Kansas there. Okay, guys, well, let's move on to uh, some NFL talk. 
big press conference today. There's a press conference going on in about one hour. Yeah, I, think I wonder what it's going to be. A, do, do you guys know what this is about? I was something in Denver? Anything about. Okay. Like, I don't know. Something about Jesus and Tebow and the great man. Like, <laughs> yeah, just it's so all. Confused. Yeah, it, it, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are near. Um, the one know. thing I, I saw today, someone posted up if, if Tebow is, you know, the Jesus of. The NFL. The NFL and the Denver Broncos, then what's Peyton Manning? <laughs> Is Peyton Manning officially a god? I don't know. <laughs> if you replace Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> this is getting pretty uh, religious. <laughs> but seriously, how good do you think the... Uh, are the Broncos a, a Super Bowl contender now with Peyton Manning? I don't think so. Why? Um... Running back, they have a big question mark at running back because no John Marino got hurt. Well, so, what about, yeah, but they don't need a running back. But, just, but what about Willis? They can throw yeah. whoever, whoever they want in there. And, yeah, and but do they, have, do they have the receiving core? They have, defense is good. They have okay. Jacker. Eric Jacker. The yeah, Thomas. Thomas. Who is going to be a fantasy but, sleeper, by the way, next year? That little guy is going to catch lots of touchdowns, so... When we're in the draft next year, I'm taking them in the first round. <laughs> Before you guys can speak of gra- go well, get You'll probably get Aaron Rodgers in the second round. Yeah, I'll, so. I'll, I'll get Aaron Rodgers in the second round. I'll put it off. It's fine. Yeah. I think, just personally, I didn't buy into the Broncos hype. They, I don't know how they managed to squeak out all those wins. It's because of their defense. It's because of their defense. Their and defense that's the exact point. The, amazing. the defense is the strong point of this team. And now you take a Peyton Manning. And put them on there. Imagine like how much they'll be able to control the ball now. Like their defense is going to be rested and for sixty minutes. They're going to be able to go out there fresh every single time because you're not going to have three and outs. Nobody can even control do, the clock. Like yeah, even if you do Peyton Manning's like a three and out for Peyton Manning is still like a four minute ordeal. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. After he gets done with everything, so I mean, it'll definitely be. I mean, look at how bad the Colts were. Without Peyton Manning, and look oh, what yeah. the Colts were with Peyton Manning. Manning is walking into the Broncos, which was a playoff team last year with Tebow, who couldn't even throw a completion. Yeah, they're going to be a dangerous team. Yeah, I, I, I guess the whole thing bear, uh, comes down to whether um, he's healthy or not. Yeah, that's my thing too. I'm not convinced. Everyone just assumes that he's going to be fine. Yeah, and I'm not convinced that he's going to be as good as he's been. In the I don't place. either. I agree with you. Yeah, I, in my mind, you can't sit out a year in anything and come back and be as good and have your neck tore totally torn apart. Yeah, I'm the neck is important when playing quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> it helps you move and throw the ball accurately. It aids your vision. Yeah, it really does. So I, I don't know. I'm not sold on on Manning. Being uh, an MVP, or but I I think he'll obviously be an upgrade. Oh yeah. That leads us to Mr. Tebow. Has he been relegated to uh, backup status forever now? Well, I, what I heard is where's he going to go? They're trying to get rid of him. Yeah, yeah but who wants him? Exactly. Yeah. A, who's going to take him? B, Jacksonville. Maybe. I don't know why they would though. Is Jackson, Jacksonville's like tickets? Because I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about the the one team. Is there a team that needs a quarterback? Jacksonville's the they only one. Right? Yeah, they have, they have Gabbert. They have they have the rookie. Yeah. I mean, you have Seattle who just signed Matt Flynn. You have Washington who's going to take uh, Griffin with the second pick. You uh, obviously the Colts are uh, the Titans. The Titans are another sh- option. And that's the thing. No, there's no team out there that needs Tim Tebow. Yeah. The Broncos didn't even need Tim Tebow. Broncos didn't want Tim well, Tebow. The only reason Tim Tebow played is because he puts butts in the seats. Yeah. Basically. And that's what the fans wanted. Yeah. So, like, like a place like Jacksonville, like, they don't have a huge fan base right now. They're, yeah, they're, they're about pretty, to lose their team. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, probably like, lose their team before they, uh, they sell You can see them getting Tim Tebow and just throwing him out there because... Obviously, Tim Tebow has... And that's North huge. Florida. That's Bible Belt, too. Well, perfect. And he went to Florida. So. Yeah. And he went to Florida. Yeah. That, so, too. He has a huge following in Florida, obviously. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he brings that national, you know, cachet that, you know, maybe Jacksonville will have a game on CBS or get a Monday night game or something like that if they have Tebow, whereas if they don't... Nobody's or Miami, but but Miami just gave Garrard, David Garrard, a, a deal for a year. 
Yeah, it's not like it's going to be cost you a lot to get Tebow. I don't think. I think you probably have him for a second round, third round pick, probably at this point. Yeah. It's funny that really the only person that I could think of that could come into Denver and take Tebow's spot was Peyton Manning. It actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yes. Who else is going to? You can't push him out. Yeah, he, he was the only player available that would have been able to push. Or not only that, just the only player. Yeah, and that's like Tom Brady. What's the problem? I don't think he's going to change teams. <laughs> yeah. You think it'd be, you know, John Elway is no dummy. You think he'd want to keep Tebow around for a year around Peyton Manning just to see if he develops, even if Tebow never gets on the field next year. Yeah, but but Peyton Manning just signed, it, it's what, like a five-year five five, five five year years, deal? Yeah. I, yeah, he's looking... It, it's but, it's AT. It's after Tebow now. But who's yeah. to say that Peyton Manning's not going to be there for five years? Guaranteed. Bet you a hundred dollars right now. Why? Because he'll either retire or get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're probably like, right. And so if he's there for, like, I think you keep Tebow around a year and let him develop with Peyton Manning. Imagine how much that will help his Tebow's development. I and mean, you know Tebow's going to love it. Yeah, you know, he's going to be like, yeah, guys, I'm going to do this for the team. <laughs> I can't wait to learn with Peyton. She will appear. And like we all said, you know, everybody's worried about Manning's health. You're going to want someone behind him that at least kind of trusts to put in there. To so who is your Super Bowl favorite right now? If you had to pick one for next year. I know this is a long way off. <laughs> Minnesota yeah. Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> okay. Good answer, Homer. And, and you? Uh... I don't know. Ah, you know what? I still like the Patriots. Yeah. To at least get to the Super Bowl again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that signing of uh, Brandon Lloyd is only going to help. That is big. Because yeah. now, now they have the down. Now they're a complete passing attack. Yeah. yeah. They didn't have there. the deep threat. It's over there. Brandon Lloyd, Wes Welker, Gronkowski. The problem yeah. with the Patriots, is. though, wasn't really their offense. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No one needs a running back. The running back is dead. <laughs> the running back might be dead. I think... I, I, Unless you have Adrian Peterson. I mean, with the record numbers, uh, the record passing numbers that are just being put up, I mean, two people broke. It, it was Rodgers and Breeze. Both went over 5,000 yards. And, and Stafford. Did Stafford go over yeah. 5,000 yards, too? Wow. Sure. wow. Yeah. I mean, if Matt Stafford can get over 5,000 yards... The running back is dead. (laughs) (laughs) Rough cast correction. (laughs) We looked it up, and uh, Rodgers did not throw for 5,000 yards. I'm just that much of a homer. It was uh, Breeze, Tom Brady, Brady, and Matthew Stafford. Stafford. So, well, Aaron Rodgers and and Tom Brady... Did eat 5,000 yards worth of string cheese last season. Yeah, that too. And he... Eli Manning threw for 4,933. Yeah, and Eli Manning somehow threw for almost 5,000 yards. He still sucks. I don't care. He won two <laughs> Super Bowls. Anyway. Yeah, okay. All right, boys and girls. That's it for this week's broadcast. Thanks to Miles and Landon coming by, dropping the knowledge. Making me look stupid once again. Alright guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and favorite on Facebook and YouTube. Catch you next week on the Grove Cast.